Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture. Today we will talk about subsets and the power set. Now the symbol, the symbol that you can see here, I've spoken about this symbol before as well. Today we will throw some more light onto it. This symbol stands for containment. What does it mean? So in case we write A, this symbol B, this essentially means that A is a subset of B. B we call A a subset of B, meaning hereby all elements that are present in A, they are in B. That's what it essentially means. And that's why I call it, I called it containment. So it means if X is in A, then X must be in B as well. Which mean, which would give you the scenario that A is contained in B and we will call A a subset of B. For example, let us suppose that B is a set of elements. Let's say B consists of A, B, C, D. We understand by now that these entries A, B, C, D, they are elements of B. Then what would be a subset of B? What would be a subset of B? Let's answer to that question. You know, you create sets which contain elements that are there in B as well. So create any set using elements of B. And that would be a subset of B. For example, you can take AB together and create a set which contains AB as elements. You can take AB, AA. Even this is a subset of B because all the elements that are there in this set are also present in B. If you create, say, you take A, B, C this time, that's also a subset of B. And if you take all A, B, C, D, then it is exactly B. In that case, we will call it actually equal to B. We would call it equal to B. Or we will have this symbol here, along with the containment sign, you will have this line here, which is telling you equality. Now, B is a set which we will call the superset. If you are creating subsets of a particular set, that set becomes the superset. All these are subsets of B. Why? For a simple reason, because all elements, elements in these sets belong to B as well. And this makes B a superset of A. In the form of Venn diagram, if you wish to you know, understand this elementary set theory notation, what do we have here? We have, if I say A is a subset of B, then B is the superset, that is, it's the bigger one. And A is contained in B. This is B and this one is A. In terms of axiomatic set theory using symbols from logic, mathematical logic, we can say that if X belongs to A, this is when we are saying A is a subset of B. Then X belongs to B as well. It's an if and then statement. X belongs to A, then X belongs to B as well. Yes, I haven't yet done mathematical logic with you, but I will definitely uh, work on it uh, with you guys. Now, a point that I made when I gave you an example that A, B, C, D, the set containing all the four elements that are there in B. That's also a subset, but that's actually equal to B. So comes another notation, which is containment along with this equal. This line stands for equal. So sets can be equal also. So therefore, A, B, C, D is a subset of B, but B, since it is equal, you can use this notation. So there are two notations. When A is contained in B, this is a strict notation. You don't 
use equality here. We call it a proper subset, which in terms of number of elements, if I may say, the number of elements in A or cardinality of A will definitely be strictly less than the cardinality of B. The number of distinct objects, the number of distinct objects in A will be uh, strictly less than the number of objects, uh, distinct objects in B. Here, equality is possible. That's what you are saying. So this is, we will just call it subset. When we just call it subset, equality could be taken. When we say proper subset, that means it's entirely inside. So in terms of diagram, if this is B, a proper subset we've already denoted, when we are saying it can be equal as well, then that means you have a circle which is absolutely overlapping. Perfect overlap equal to A. That means they are overlapping. Let's go on to the real numbers again. So we had the set of natural numbers, set of whole numbers, set of integers, set of rationals, and set of real numbers. Now, set of natural numbers consists of one, two, three, so on and so forth. And the whole numbers consist of zero, one, two, three. So clearly, set of natural numbers is entirely contained in the set of whole numbers. Now, the integers, integers come along with negative numbers along with the whole numbers which means the set of whole numbers is entirely inside the set of integers or contained subset. Now, rational numbers, they consist of all the fractions plus all the integers. Fractions and all the integers, that means the set of integers is entirely it's a proper subset of the set of rationals and all these are part of real numbers. Real numbers would also consist of irrational numbers. So all these are proper subsets and in this manner, in this direction, okay? That's the notion of subset. Let's pause for a while and think. Let's ask ourselves some questions related to the same topic. So, suppose A is a set which consists of four numbers, one, two, three, four. Let us take B as one and two. So B consists of two elements, one and two. Is B a subset of A? Absolutely yes, because whatever is in B is a part of A as well. Let's take C, another set. Let's take it as say one, three, four. Is C a subset of A? Well, yes, because all the elements in C, they are a part of A as well. So it satisfies the, our definition of subsets. Let's take B as the set that contains the set which contains only one. D is the set which contains the singleton set containing one. B is a set that contains another set. So the singleton set one that you see is an element of D. Now the question is, is D a subset of A? To be a subset of A, all the elements that are in a particular set should be a part of the superset as well, right? So you need to answer to the question, is the set, singleton set containing one, an element of A? And well, the answer is no, which means the element of D is not a part of the superset A. Hence, therefore, D is not a subset of A. And we can denote it as D we can just cut it off, is not a subset of A. So you gotta be careful with what is a subset and what is not a subset in any tricky kind of situation. Well, a trivial one, but an important one. 
is phi a subset of A? Phi, which is the null set. Null set contains nothing. Curly bracket without anything. Empty. Empty set. Is that a subset of A? Well, yes. Because everything in phi should be there in A and there's nothing in phi. But A consists of many elements, but whatever is in phi is a part of A as well in that sense because there is nothing in phi. So it's not happening that something which is there in phi is not there in A. That scenario is not happening. So yes, phi is a subset of A. It's not equal to A because a is a set which consists of one, two, three, four. It's not empty. That is why we will say that phi is a proper subset of A. Phi is a subset of any set A for that matter because everything in phi, which is nothing, is a part of that superset A. Now we will talk about the power set. Power set. What is it? The simple answer to that is all the subsets that you can create out of a given set, if you collect them as elements and create a set, that will be called a power set of that set. Because we're looking at a power set of a particular set A. We can denote it like this, and it will be a set that consists of all possible subsets of A. How do you know what subsets to put? How do you create all subsets of A? That's something we will learn today. How to generate this set. Suppose A is a set that consists of these four numbers, one, two, three, four. How to generate the power set of A? Let's start with phi. Phi is a subset of any set, right? Phi is nothing. So let's start with nothing. I have numbers one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start with the number one. You can add number one. You can add one or you may not add one. If you add one to phi, which is nothing, you will just get one element here, one. And when you are not adding, you will still have phi. In the next step, I'm going to take the element two. So you can add two and you may not add two. You have two options. If you add two, the new set that you get is two, a set consisting of one as well as two. If you do not add two, you will just have one, the set that consists of one. Now you got to do the same thing here as well. You had five. Now if you add two, you will get a set with just two. And if you do not add two, you will get five. It will just remain five. And we can continue this process. In the next step, let's add three because three is a part of A and not add three. So if you add three here it, with this branch, you will get one, two, three. With this branch, you will just be left with one, two. Here, again, you got to do the same thing. If you add three, you will get one, three here. If you do not add three, you'll just have one. And here, two, three. If you do not add, you will still have just two. Here, you add three, you do not add three. Add three, you will have singleton three. Do not add three, you will have five. And then there will be another. You can branch one more time. I'm leaving that for you to do on your own. So the number of elements in a power set. If you notice what is happening at every level, at every level, you have two options. So what would be the number of elements in a power set? At every level, you have two options. Either you add one element or you do not add in one element. So therefore, if you notice, at every level, you have two options. That means in case you have n elements and at every level, I have two options, the total number of cases that will get generated will be two to the power n. Of course, I'm using some counting here. So two to the power n is the total number of sets, subsets, 
the elements that will be there in the power in a power set in case the set consists of n elements so a has n elements then its power set p a has 2 to the power n elements let's understand with few examples here suppose a is phi it contains nothing then what would be the power set of a that is the what is the power set of phi well, it contains nothing means n is equal to zero. So the number of elements in the power set should be two to the power zero, that is one. And what's that element? Phi itself. Phi is a subset of every set. So phi, the set containing phi is the power set of phi. Now suppose we take, now suppose we take a dash, which is the set that contains phi. Look at the difference between the two sets. A is phi. Phi is a set of no elements. This time A dash, which is the set containing phi. So it has one element. It has one element, n equals to one. So therefore the number of elements in the power set should be two, two to the power one, that's two. What are these elements? One is phi because phi is a subset of every set and the other one will be the set consisting phi which is your a dash itself phi and a dash itself these are the two elements of the power set and let me ask you another question which of the following is true so you have a set a and you have a power set of a is A a subset of power set of A or A is an element of power set of A? Which is true out of these two statements? A is a subset of power set of A? The answer is no. A is not a subset of power set of A. It is an element. It's a different scenario. So if we have A as one, two, three, four, then the power set of A would consist of phi, then all singleton sets, then all the sets containing two, two elements. So the combinations with two, two elements, so on and so forth. Then combinations with three, three elements, so on and so forth. So forth. And there will be one set, which is A itself, that is one, two, three, four. This set is an element of the power set. It's not a subset. It's an element of a power set. Subset of a power set would be a set which is containing these items, containing these sets as its elements, okay? So the correct answer is A is an element of power set of A. It's not a subset of power set of A. Thank you.